touch and go with the internet the last few days. It looks like it's working. So hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, but I always say take notes just in case. And I'll try and remember, but I do forget <clears throat> usually when I'm channeling. So I'm just going to start to draw in what I can see around you, which is just, yeah, it's amazing. You look beautiful, by the way, not only you, because you can't even help it, but <laughs> I don't know what you're using for your camera. And I, I don't know if you have a light, but man, you're perfectly lit in your quality mm -hmm. and you just look stunning. Oh, thank you. I've just got a ring light, but I'm just on a MacBook. So it's just the, I guess, the camera that's built into the laptop. So not the best wow. camera, but yeah, maybe it softens things. I'm not sure. <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, you look really good. Thanks. So what I can see around you um, is this beautiful diamond light. It's like a rainbow light body. And I just see aspects of like a pearlized, um, it's almost like with dragonfly wings when you see like all of the different rainbows and it's kind of like opalescence, but see-through. Um, it just has this beautiful luminous quality. So I'm just gonna draw this in. And I'll also, I'll send you this too. Right on. But this is fun, like just feeling into the energy. And it, it's interesting as I'm like drawing this, I can actually feel different ancestors standing. It's almost like they're standing like, um, you know, up in a higher dimension and I'm seeing them smile at each other and they're looking. It's like mm. they've brought this, you know, this connection together. So I'm just feeling a lot of happiness that's coming up from, um, from ancestral energy. Mm, that's nice. Yeah. I'm feeling it too. Yeah, yeah, it feels really, really different, really unique. So I'm just popping this in and yeah, there's lots of different colors, but I don't often see like rainbow light bodies in um, people's aura drawings. It's usually splodge of green here, a bit of purple here. Um, so this is, you know, this is quite different. Well, we can speak on that after I, I'm more interested right now just hearing what you have to say. But uh, yeah. I was told by the grandmothers that they said you are the rainbow we've been waiting for. And they explained wow. that rainbow to them doesn't mean what it means to us. It's the chakras. And only when they're clean and balanced do they emit light from red in the root, the purple in the crown. And she said to those of us that have the gift of sight, you've become the whirling rainbow. I thought that's oh, really nice. nice. And they said wow. that Tibetans have the same understanding of obtaining the rainbow body. I think it's yeah. a beautiful teaching because we can all become rainbow, right? Everyone yeah, and everyone will have their own walk and their own path to follow. And it doesn't matter whether you're female or male or what race or what religion, you know, it's all helping each other become rainbow. So I'm yeah. glad you could see. Thank you. And I, it was funny because I had a few of the, I had a few tall white beings show up early this morning and I just saw them just walking around. It was more like in my third eye that I could see them, but feel them. And to me, they just felt like the ancient ones was the names mm. that came up and I've just drawn them in. So I don't actually have the white show up on the paper. So I've done it in a soft pink, but they do actually emanate that sort of soft pink heart glow quality. It'll be a little bit hard to see here, but you can see I've sort of drawn it in almost like a diamond shape. Um, and mm. that's the way it sort of comes in. With the diamond shapes, um, and we might have different language, but the way that it comes through is they usually talk about um, Christos or Christ consciousness. And it really represents bringing down that unconditional love and seeding it on the earth. But it also represents the stability of being like a pillar of light and that it's sort of, you know, part of your role and your mission to actually expand and to radiate that light here. Um, so we'll pick some cards and have a look into what they want to communicate and tell us about this, but we'll, we'll come back to that at various different I'm excited. <laughs> Me too. It's beautiful energy. It's funny. It actually, it feels like home is the, the word that I want to say. That's the closest description that I can describe. Oh, right on. That's yeah. one of my uh, favorite songs by my brother from another mother is called, You Feel Like Home to Me. I'll send oh. it to you. Yeah, I would love to hear that. Um, yes, so please. I've, got, I've got four cards down here. So I always will feel into the cards before we flip them, unless spirit says otherwise. And it is freezing. Okay. So I'm tucked in with a blanket. Um, 
All right. So the first thing that I can actually, like as soon as I see the cards, I'm seeing this higher dimensional energy and there's something to do with why we've drawn the diamond. It's like a facet. I actually feel that you're connecting to a facet of yourself and this diamond reflection that we're seeing in your aura and your body is actually, yeah, another kind of like extension of yourself or another, I just keep seeing the, saying the word facet over and over. So I feel like you're really in alignment with who you are on a higher level. I would even say that there's not only the ET energies, but I'm seeing strong angelic energy being connected with you. And I think that the name Michael was chosen very appropriately because I do feel that there is a connection and a protective energy. And I keep seeing a sword really, really strong. So I would say that like you're connected with that. Does that make sense as well? Yeah, you know, I can tell you at one of the Star Knowledge conferences, I was given my Native American spiritual name. And during that, I, I, it's weird for me to even talk about, but they said I was being recognized as the current incarnation of Archangel Michael and yeah. that they returned. He, they said it's his, as above, so below. It's the 3D version of his sword and it's sitting uh -huh. right behind me. And uh, they said it's been in their teeth for a very long time. And, uh, and they said, I wouldn't have got it if I would have chosen a dark seat. Cause I'm just telling you what they told me that wow. Michael and Lucifer are one in the same. And it yeah. depends on whether I took a light or a dark seat within the council and I've taken a light seat. So they returned my sword and I'm like, whatever. Right. But it is yeah. what it is. It's sitting right behind me at the end of this. I'll I show it to you. Sword. I've got a sword right behind me. Oh, I've just moved it <clears throat> over to the couch. I'm going to run and get it. One second. I'll grab the other one. <laughs> but yeah, everything that you're saying, it makes sense to the way that I'm being shown things too. Oh, you so nailed it. You know, it's so weird because that's not my bag. You know what I mean? I'm like, really? Uh, but they said... My name back in Sumer, I was known as Ia, which means grandfather, by the way, in uh, Native mm -hmm. American First Nation. And then Inki, as you know, is a title. It's not a name. And it means yeah. Lord of the Earth or Ambassador of the Earth. Yeah. And um, they said, that's, those aren't names. They're titles. They said your name has always been Michael or Mikiel. And yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, oh uh, wow that is beautiful made out of crystal and it has the serpent and the egg from serpent mound and it's got the flora de lee for the bloodline and then it's got the eclipse moon symbol going up the shaft which is inky symbol back in sumer they said this was made with the same technology as the mitchell hedges crystal skull wow. which is sound and uh so as, as crazy as it sounds you know Right there it is. That is um, that's just like next level amazing. That's so incredible. Thank you. My, mine is a little bit more probably like production <laughs> manufactured. It no, right on. Me, it's but it's a, it's a Viking one. So it's just got the symbol on there. Mm. And we just found out a few years ago that we've got the Scandinavian heritage too. So it's interesting how that one found me. But um, we'll read into the cards, but sorry, what was that? How long have you had your sword? Uh, maybe only about two months, I think. So not too long. Oh, right. Yeah, but it just, when I saw it, I'm like, I think that one's for me. Um, but yeah, I feel into these cards. I, I'm still seeing the same thing. The other thing that I'm also seeing is counsel. And I keep feeling to put my hand over my heart. Like I really feel that this is the way that you connect with them. They're showing me like third eye. It's like heart. And then the energy sort of shoots up to third eye. And then I'm seeing it sort of uh, like, uh, they're giving me the word like scape out. It's like, <laughs> it's like um, just coming up from the heart, connect to the third eye. And then it's like, yeah, I, I, I can't think of another way to describe it apart from, you know, when you see um, like Hiroshima or things like that, and there's like an energy explosion and you just see the energy filter out. It's almost like when you connect to your heart, then your third eye and you connect up to council, there's something that's like spreading your wings. And, and it's like the earth actually feels like the flap of your wings come in is what spirit's showing me. So I definitely feel that it's really good for you to connect and go up as often as you can because that energy also filters back down. I'll just see what else they're showing me. 
The other thing that they're showing me is there's a lot of talking going on at the moment to do with council or to do with, you know, who you're working with on the higher level. Um, and I'm seeing like, it, it seems to be kind of like a sorting or different thing going on up there. I feel like there's a lot of activity happening um, and a lot of business is the way that they're sort of putting it. Oh, and before I forget guard. my, oh, sorry, what was that? Sort of change of guard. Yeah, yeah, it feels like it. I'm seeing someone being pushed aside or removed as well. So I'm not sure if there was someone who perhaps was like an infiltrator. That's the word that they give me, but I'm seeing them being removed and put aside. Um, and I'm also seeing them have more of like a dark soul energy. And I felt like that they were perhaps trying to get in. Um, yeah, it's interesting, but I'm seeing them being removed, oh, no, which exactly is good. And I'm seeing I know exactly what you're talking about and you're right on the money. Yeah, and it, it feels, I, I would say, I feel that it's someone that got close to you and tried to get like within a circle and then I'm seeing them, yeah, removed is the only way that I'm being shown. It does feel like relationship type energy in the doorway or the Trojan horse um, is sort of the way that they keep trying to display or to show it. Does that make sense as well? Yes, I... Uh... Well, just real quick, I met my brother in Lil, and he said, Michael, no, this isn't the first time we've met, that the last time we met, and obviously another incarnation, he said, it wasn't pleasant, but I understand now you were only showing me my own darkness. Um, and uh, yeah. so we actually had much brotherly love flowing um, for the last couple of years, and he has passed. He dropped his robe, and... Uh, mm -hmm. There's been a succession of the star altar. So you're yeah. right on the money. Uh, it's not going to do a dictatorship or. No, I didn't feel that really. way. It's, yeah, it's not that at all. It's just some of us, our mental energy, yeah. you're only manifesting from the mass consciousness. You're really not adding anything new. But on the flip side, there's those of us that have done our homework and our mental energy affects things even more. And then there's yeah. some of us that affects the mass consciousness the most. And our bigger picture is giving sway for the blueprint of humanity. So yeah. he stepped down off the throne because for the last 7,000 years, he was just shown humanity's worst case behavior. And I understand I it because we're pretty ugly, you know, as a human <laughs> species. We're going to, but. We're also beautiful and there's yeah. a lot of potential if we're not strapped down by the slavery that we've been exactly. put under. And, so and it makes sense things. what you're describing too, because spirit keeps showing me almost like a, a Marvel version of the Loki type character. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, Thor wanting to have that love, that connection and things, but there's just something within that, you know, trickster type character that wants to have like a, a switch or to watch how things play out. Um, it's sort of a little bit of the energy too. He told me he is the main trickster. He said, Michael, I work with the seven Lords of light and the seven Lords of darkness. I'm the only one who sits directly between those two councils. And I'm the only one who holds a seat on both sides, both light and dark. So you wow. gotta be careful with him because 50% of the time he's gonna be coming from a dark seat to see yeah. if he can get you to give your energy away to an illusionary yeah. outside source. But you know, the, all that became very transparent to me. And I could yeah. tell when he's coming from a dark seat and the sarcasm that came through, but you're right on the money. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's what just it's so out? interesting to watch and and just the way that I sort of see you know the council type area and that because when I sort of see you know higher council going on it usually is kind of in a, a big almost like a coliseum type room um it's sometimes how I see it galactically but with thrones and things and he literally was getting removed you know from from that area so awesome. I just remembered that connection too so I'll just see what else they're showing me okay so I'm hearing light language also connected to do with um council and I'm awesome. seeing just there's not only is there a rearrangement and things and like a lot of organizing going on I feel that they're stepping into kind of like early celebration um, and I'm just sort of seeing it almost feels like they're decorating, you know, like you would before a party or a mm -hmm. celebration 
Um, and I'm just sort of seeing different things go up. So I feel that they're stepping into or preparing for an energy of what's about to happen and come. And I'm just seeing them all smile like within each other, you know, knowingly. It's like when you give a child a Christmas present and you know like what they're about to unwrap, but they've got no idea mm -hmm. and you just feel this kind of joy for what gift humanity is about to receive. Um, I'm just feeling that come in, but I'm going to do the light language and then I'll translate into English. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Alanata <laughs> So the English translation, and I'll ask you if there's anything you felt or like received as well. Um, but what I kept seeing was this beautiful feminine presence. And I actually met her or saw her the other day in, there was a little gathering that I went to um, where we were, I guess, you know, inside of a beautiful circle that was protected. And I saw this beautiful being that was kind of like overseeing, I guess, the universe, but overseeing the earth too. And it was like, she was working on both levels. And I saw her working with council and working with various different beings and guides. And what she was showing me was similar to what I just heard her speak then, or what she was saying. And I keep seeing, it's like the tears of the gods and the tears of, you know, council and all of these higher ascended beings. And what I mean by like tears, it's like a pearl or a gem or kind of like a crystal of the energy that they've given towards this mission. And what they were showing me was that each person in humanity were not, not each, but the ones that are sort of, I guess, activating and working with things or come with true knowledge of what they're doing and their mission down here, that that part of them is also being activated at this moment. And it's like a gift within them. And what they were showing was them wanting to pass on or give to us the energy and the excitement and the wisdom, but also it's, um, there's like a love expression that comes from the tears. I'm trying to think how to put it into English. Um, but what they're sort of showing me, you know how we can impress like uh, emotion and feeling and things into water or the same even with your beautiful symbols. It's like the energy creates that beautiful image. They're showing me there's something kind of frozen within time and it's like their tears are like crystals to us. So they're trying to give us the gifts of, I guess, love and appreciation and gratitude for everything that we've been doing down here on the earth realm was what I was being seen, uh, being shown. But yeah, I just kept seeing like a celebration and I just kept seeing it was like council kind of floating. The other thing that I also saw was like temples being activated and different energies and temples being activated down here in the earth realm as well. Um, and I might get some more downloads on it later because there was a lot of like different things happening at the same time. What was it that, um, was there anything you sort of felt or experienced? No, actually I'm tearing up, which and usually that's when my soul is touched. Um, I love light language and you speak it so fluently and beautifully. I'm just moved emotionally. I, uh, there's only one other person that I know that speaks it as fluently as you do. And I love hearing it. Um, I know something in my, higher self understands yeah. I uh, I just sit back and take it in and I feel grateful you know to Thank you. hear it um all I can tell you is I'm getting emotional you know in a very good way yeah. And oh, the other thing I forgot to mention, and thank you for um, your beautiful words as well. The other thing that I saw, I kept seeing like the, I guess the age of our souls. And I kept seeing like 
they just kept showing me like connected connected and I saw like other people as part of that energy part of that group but they kept showing me like a gem that was like over the heart but it kept looking like a teardrop it's something to do with the emotion that's crystallized or embedded um, and part of the work that I've been led with um, I guess like you know with my guides and things is into like plasma waters and to do with like the water that's connected and held within our body and how sacred that is but especially around the pericardium um, that water sac that's around the heart and the water within the wounds and the water within the brain. Yeah. Mm. We'll flip the cards over and see what comes up. Oh my gosh, okay. this is so interesting. So the first card that we have is the shaman that walks between both worlds. This explains what spirit was describing before between existing and living up here, but also has a lot of Archangel Michael type energy that comes in with this. And we see that it's a beautiful eagle spirit too. And we see on top of the crown, the eagle, and he comes in on an eagle. So I always see this um, as kind of an expression as a UFO, you know, when we're talking about like coming in on a chariot, you know, I always view it as an ET, a blue ET or a um, UFO, but it's someone who delivers and brings medicine connected to do with the heart. So we see the Kundalini expansion over the heart chakra. So this is definitely connected with your mission. We also see the blue lotus as well. So the blue lotus in ancient Egyptian times was taken to activate the DMT in the pineal gland. So this is about you bringing and birthing this greater vision and this gift of, um, you know, being in alignment with the Archangel Michael energy, as well as, you know, the Enki energy and everything else that you bring down. It's, this is like, you know, what you're supposed to be doing, bringing it down into earth realm. Um, so yeah, you have a foot in each world. Um, they're referencing and talking about, I guess, the last six months. So we have the nine of wands, which is the card of strength. And we see here, this is an eclipse energy with Sagittarius. So eclipses generally last for about six months. So when we have one, the energy of it will flow on for the next six months. So they're definitely referencing like your last six months. This is also sun energy. So whatever was kind of hidden or in shadow was brought to light, whatever needed to be, you know, brought up and pushed on and moved out was, was done. Um, with the Sagittarian energy as well, this for me, like the core essence of this is about meaning. So there might have been like a lot of soul searching, a lot of meaning, a lot of looking into like why this is happening. And we also have interference happening as well. So yeah, there might have been like a lot of interference coming up or popping up. Um, and it definitely feels like it when it's health stuff happening. Um, but we also have the Hierophant come up, which is in the future placement. So this again is talking about like your connection to higher counsel, your connection to God, your connection to source. And we see here as well, um, with, with the Hierophant, it's he or she that can converse or can bring messages to the earth. So I do feel that you're going to be receiving and um, streaming new messages. Streaming is the word that Spirit actually gives me with this. So we'll just take some clarification cards. Um, but this is definitely governed by Venus because it's Taurus energy as well. But it also represents it usually represents specific chosen people as well with the Hierophant. It's not everyone that can just, you know, converse in this way. So it also represents the little trumpets at the top and the heralding of the trumpets. We also see, strangely enough, a mask that kind of looks like Obama. So we're, we, you know, we're talking about literally the current time that we're in or the current reality. But I feel this is also taking masks off those sort of characters, like politically, that we're actually going to see exactly who they are and it will be people like you that are heralding heralding the energy to have that connection to purity and it's like when you're holding all of this light it shines on the darkness and so we see the truth just naturally or the they keep showing me like a dark cloak fall away and we actually see the truth so part of the energy and frequency you're holding will also help to dispel um, lies and deception and things too so we'll just get some clarifiers And this particular deck, I do just flip over. They've just given me four. Okay, so there's an interesting energy when it comes to some of these cards. But what we've got at the moment, where we had Prince of Cups, we've got Page of Cups uh, as well. I feel that this is to do with like rebuilding trust um, after the last six months. Um, and I feel that it's 
perhaps even deciding like, do I want to put my heart to this mission? You know, do I want to keep going? And I guess that was, you know, that crossroad of deciding whether to stay or whether to go. So I feel that they're referencing the hard times that you've had. We even have the eight of cups, which, you know, excuse my French, but it's like, fuck it. I'm just going to walk away from everything, everything that I've worked hard for, everything that I came to earth to do with, maybe they're not ready for it. So there is a bit of that feeling that comes up with this. Um, we also That's see the energy again over the same card. So they're literally referencing the last six months and eclipse energy. Um, with this energy too, it's the hermit. And with that hermit energy, it really feels like just needing to withdraw from everyone and not having the people that understand on the same level of what your soul is actually going through. And sometimes it's about like... Um, I'm trying to think of the words in English because they're showing me an energy, but it's like where you feel sometimes that people aren't ready for the gift that you're here to bring to the world. And with the hermit energy, because it is Merlin energy too, it's sometimes like really like assessing. I always see it like a skipping rope is the way that spirit shows it. And it's like two people on the end and we're sort of like timing going, do I jump now or am I going to get whipped by humanity or whipped by, you know, the energies around? So it really mm. is sort of like a bit of a calculating type one. An eight of cups also represents sometimes when we feel an emotional fracture within ourselves, or we sort of feel like we're stuck and we don't know how to kind of break free from that. Um, we have the eight of wands up here straight after which is over the eight of swords. This is interesting, like the synchronicities that you've got coming up just with the cards. When I see eight of wands energy, traditionally most readers will go, yep, it's like overnight change. It's like the frequency switch you just felt recently. But what I see with it as well, I always call it quantum jump energy. It's when spirit shows up and if we're up for the challenge, if we've done the work, if the frequency and vibration are matching, we actually now move to... Um, I always say eight of wands as a compass with many different directions and we forget where north is like within us and it's like imagining shooting an arrow out in multiple directions instead of like condensing our energy so the way to kind of work with this quantum jump energy because it's mercury and sagittarius so it's our higher mind is trying to calculate and find meaning from all different directions the message in it is to actually get super still and really just pull on the vibration from higher um, which is high priestess energy being that exalted form and literally put the bow and arrow down on our knees and surrender and really just pull in that energy of who you are on a high level. And that's what I always see like as the quantum jump, when that happens, we hit a new epoch. So we hit the energy of the sun, which is happiness. It's the inner child, it's celebration. It's this beautiful wonderment and sense of freedom that comes from being like the child on the horseback. And we see the sunflowers. So mm -hmm. this is also about like when you hold this energy within you, when you really like fully bring in who you are on this higher level that we were talking about right at the start and you fully like go, I'm not gonna hide anymore. I'm going to like, you know, come out of this, um, this energy and I'm really going to just start to shine because the sun is also activating the rainbow light body as well. Um, so yeah, I feel like we've got some exciting times that are coming up. The sunflowers for me represent that Leo energy as well. And it represents whenever I see a sunflower, I see a teacher. So it also represents that, you know, the flower with all of the little seeds, so there's something that you're coming up towards that you're going to be gifting, um, but it has very much to do with coming into alignment with that higher self. We also see um, with this card too, it usually will represent a choice uh, to be made, but I feel that you already over the last couple of days, it's like you're, it's like game on. Um, do you have any questions so far or anything you want to ask about or look into further? Um, no, I mean, it seems right on the money and, uh, the last statement, you know, that I'm ready. My new statement is hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's such an Aussie saying as well. We have that over here. I love that. Should we have a look perhaps into um, these beautiful beings that are around you? These sure. Tall... Anything you feel like you want to take it in that direction, I'm all about it. Awesome. Cool. Well, we just had some cards that were trying to jump out in connection to do with this. 
So I'm just going to pop these out. So we've got three cards and I always just go by like where spirit leads me. So sometimes they'll flash up an image and like, right, we're going down. I always feel like Alice in Wonderland. It's like, right, we're just going down this rabbit hole. Um, so the first card we had come out, they fell out face up. So we have the Magnus. And in modern day terms, I talk about this being Neo in the Matrix when the bullets are kind of flying at him. And all of a sudden he's like, I don't even have to play this game. I'm this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, the beautiful beings are working with you in regards to this mission. So they're really talking about, or how would I say, there's like a consoling energy of all this hard work that you've done, this mission, not only in this lifetime, but even on like this other level as well, it's come down to this point. This is like end game would be like the words that they would use. But we also see here that um, with the Magnus, it's also represented as the magician in like the normal deck of tarot. The full card would be, you know, the first step on the journey and it would be going down the rabbit hole. It, it literally is like Peter Pan or Alice in Wonderland energy where we're, we're kind of learning still. We're like, you know, searching, we're in the moment. Whereas the Magnus or the magician is this energy of, you just know how to attract everything to you, everything that you could ever want or desire. It literally starts to show up in your field. So with this as well, we see the Achilles heel being a little bit of an open point. So energetically, it's talking about protecting yourself, being the highest, um, I guess, like if we're looking at it in, if there's any weakness within the card. So Achilles actually had the damage to his aura. A lot of people talk about that it was in battle or, you know, uh, in the heel. But yeah, apparently it's meant to be like an energy leak in the aura. So just to make sure you keep doing like your protection work and things. But we also see how his um, Kundalini at the top of the crown chakra is activated. And we have the beautiful wings. But we also see there's a bit of a matrix or kind of like this um, illusionary type reality. So he's learned how to kind of like hack the matrix the next card that we have is the nine of swords now what they're referencing here is this is a little bit of dark night of the soul energy and it's come up you know just in the placement of where we had some of the other cards to do with so your your team is like referencing like what you've walked through and i feel that there's such respect and such honor for having done it down here in the earth walk side of things because it's definitely much harder down here compared to like what it is up there and we also have the Knight of Wands. So, oh, and with the with the Nine of Swords as well, this has been my card that references the last couple of years, literally since like the whole scandemic side of things. This has been the card that's did come you say up. Scandemic? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Especially being here in Melbourne. We had the world record for like the longest lockdown. Um, oh. So yeah, with this energy, it, it's referencing particularly the walk that you've done over the last couple of years. Um, and I feel that spirit's really just trying to remind you that you are this person that has come here specifically for like the end game and specifically to kind of like reset things to how they're supposed to be. Um, what we're seeing at the moment and where spirit's guiding us to work towards, there's like a little bit to be done, but it's more to do with the subconscious mind. So traditionally, most readers will say, this is a card of like, running in just get the job done and then like we burn ourselves out we become exhausted and we sort of fall in a heap the way that spirit always talks to me about this card they've got nicknames for some of the cards or archetypes they call this the tony robbins card that's kind of like their cute little nickname but to me it represents the, the subconscious belief systems that are ready to fall away and we need to kind of prime and prepare and like beat our hand you know, on the chest, ready for this next adventure. So there's a fire walk that's coming for the future and they're priming and preparing you ready for this next stage and this next walk. So they're talking about getting your mind in the right condition, your spirit, like everything. Um, I just heard the word armor as well. So I actually feel that they're talking about uh, for battle so I'm not sure if that means something to you they're like passing the energy over to you with that I'm just being shown the armor but I feel that something about just the way that they're showing it I feel that you might have had like guidance on that does that make sense I just sent you Alma's contact info yeah <laughs> 
Wow. He's okay. one of the most profound teachers of star knowledge and was right under Chief Gold and White Eagle. And he understands the star symbols more so than anyone. And I've been given the privilege to be an official distributor of the star knowledge books. And right the first time when you open the book, it says this was previously titled the Manual of the Galactic Federation of Light. Wow. So uh, she's- Oh, I just got goosebumps. Yeah, she's a, a profound teacher and um, and I'm, you know, I went from chief, now I found out about her Patreon and, yeah. uh, you know, and being able to learn from her because right now it's kind of weird, as you know, with my eyes, the situation, yeah. uh, I can't really read well. So I got all these books. And I'm like, ah, I can't read them, but I can listen. And so I'm listening to her explain what all the symbols are and whatnot. And I do want to say this is really strange. I don't even know if it matters. But so you know, these symbols are almost like if you look at 3D matrix land as like yeah. a holographic game and you're being given cheat codes. Oh, so yeah, like yeah. for instance, the first star symbol I learned it instantly grounds you and brings your higher self down into your physical form. And I can yeah. show you this, this. I just activated it. So I'm here to show like that and you're using prana and chi out of your palm chakra to burn that symbol into the astral. And it's like telling spirit, I know what I'm doing and I'm doing it on purpose. But right now yeah. I'm onto my third symbol and I'm really proud to be able to offer these teachings because they've helped me tremendously in my own unfolding. I don't even know what the right word is. Yeah, oh, I feel, I just feel tears like with you talking about that too, because even just like the last couple of weeks, I've been drawing symbols into the etheric. And even back like when I was working years ago, because my background's also in natural medicine. So I'm a trained kinesiologist, um, mm. but I do, used to call Syrian healing. And so when I would have clients in person, I would draw symbols in their aura, or I would take out the various different bodies and work on healing the different energy lines and perhaps encode with symbols and then pop the bodies back, sort of stacked together like you're working on a computer. But yeah, it, it, it does. It comes out of the energy of the palm chakras. Um, yes. Yeah, I haven't, heard, I haven't heard someone else describe that before. One of the grandmothers showed me how to activate the symbols because in the book, it doesn't show you. Get, you got to circle it. By the way, have you ever seen uh, Doctor Strange? The movie? That, the that is my favorite Marvel. He's my favorite character. Right on. <laughs> me too. But when yeah. I seen him, I'm like, oh my God, he's activating star symbols. So from yeah, portals. That's what I thought. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, I was like, hmm, because I had already been taught how to do this. But the deal is, she walked through, she said, showed me how to do the symbol for as above, so below, the grounding symbol. But she had me do it through my finger chakra. And oh. she said, now once you're done with that, do it out of your palm and wow. cup your hand, you know? And yeah. so I did it that way. Boy, it's a huge difference. And she said the palm chakra is the biggest energy chakra yeah. in the human body. So, yeah. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. That's an amazing. I can't wait to get you a book now. I think you'll dig it because these symbols are supposedly galactic symbols. And it's yeah. like what was on the Roswell craft. It says that these symbols, you um, know, were on it. So it's yeah. not earth centric. And um, one thing I can tell you is when I received the book, I told Chief Golden Light Eagle in Lil, I said, I wanted to thank you for writing this book because it's brought a, a lot of confirmation into my life he said yeah. well shit, you wrote it he said oh i said too much and he turned around and walked away wow. i'm like what the hell what does oh that mean you know? so uh later on i asked him he i was invited to go to an ancient ceremony and um some of the things that are going on the dark is testing people to see if they can get them to bite dark carrots i call mm -hmm. them and I asked them, I said, is anyone reading your book? Because it seems like if they did read it, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing here. And he said, Michael, I told you I didn't write the book you did. And even <laughs> if I were to read it, I wouldn't remember it. 
I'm like, well, what the hell does that mean again? Because <laughs> I don't remember writing it. <laughs> I'll tell you yeah. that. But it is the Manual of the Galactic Federation of Light. And it's yeah. pretty much a blueprint for us humans to follow to, you know, unlock your chakras and to clean yeah. that system and become rainbow, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I, I can't wait to get the book. And then the first thing that I wanted to do, like when I saw that you were going to be distributing, I just want to run my hand because that's how I read the energy, like, you know, in the cards, the mm. symbols speak to me. And it's the same when I see ET or light language when I read it and I get shown like different visions or feelings like within my body or consciousness. So that's, I call it decoding. That's like how I decode. Mm. And it was interesting. I don't know if you saw um, Dr. Jonathan Reed and his case to do with the um, the link bracelet. Did you see his case um, no. to do with like EP? Um, so he in Washington State, I think it was back in like 96 or 97, was walking with his dog and saw a black, almost kind of like a, um, like a tachyon sort of shaped craft just suspended in the forest. And his dog ran up ahead and came across a being that looked like a gray, but um, almost like turtle-like. And um, this thing pretty much obliterated the dog into dust. And he was a psychologist until like the government and everyone stripped him of, you know, every title and everything. Um, but he actually clopped this thing over the head with a log and then was profusely sick for about two hours before he woke up, saw that this being was there, that the thing had actually, you know, happened, this interaction, and wrapped it in, I think it was the, you know, the silver survival blankets, took it back to his house, put it in the freezer. But this um, being was wearing a, a link bracelet, an artifact. And when I popped my hand over the, the symbols, the information that I got was, within the bracelet and there's these little on the inside of the cuff there's little three uh, needles anyway when people have popped it on um, most people actually die or they have a heart attack they can't handle the intensity of the light and energy mm. when he's popped it on he actually he said it feels like he's having a heart attack and he just turns into light they even called it on tv in mexico um, but the information that came to me was that it was activating um, the light body and with the little acupuncture needles and the symbols that spoke to me, it's um, it's to do with our nervous system. So our nervous system, if it's equipped for taking on that kind of amount of electricity or light, or if our spirit is, it's like a conductor. So yeah, that, that I'll have to find a picture of it and send it to you because the symbols on there yeah. look like Roswell symbols too. That's what the Anunnaki told me, by the way, um, is that the human vessel is not capable of their energetic level and that's why the nephilim was created because the increase of this enzyme creatine kinase brings extra oxygen into the bloodstream the more oxygen is in the bloodstream the more electrical capacitance or chi or prana or life force you can hold so you don't they said the problem was when they first tried to incarnate into the human form they would spontaneously combust and yeah. burst into flames and Wow. No matter how much you want to help, bursting into flames isn't pleasant. So you know, they had to create a, a new option. Had, sorry, sorry to interrupt. As a child, I had dreams and fear of spontaneous human combustion. And I had no way to know why I had that fear. But I would have nightmares of just fear around spontaneous human combustion, which I thought was quite odd as mm -hmm. a child. Yeah, well, that's now it. you know why. I'm sure yeah. you and I and many of the early incarnations when we chose and signed up to come and help, well, there was no offshoot of the human genome that had yeah. an extra pool of fee available and we probably did combust. I still run really hot. <laughs> well, well that would balance me out because I'm always cold. <laughs> Mm. Except for summer, summer is lovely. And um, I forgot to tell you as well, when you said before, and we were talking about the Archangel Michael um, connection and energy, I remember back in my early college days, because that was the first time I came across 
someone who really, you know, encouraged me. Um, so one of my teachers, she always said, you know, if you see anything in the room, she was like, tell me, like, I would love to know because, you know, she always talked about Ascension Masters and, and things like that. And she had, um, she'd be probably in her 70s now, I think, or maybe 60s, but she had um, a boyfriend that's no longer on the earth. He, he passed um, really young. He was probably maybe before the 27 Club, but he spoke light language. And, you know, this is back when she was a teen, um, but he would talk to animals and things like that. But she always said he was like a, a part of a fractal of an incarnation of Archangel Michael energy. And it was interesting because he would always come in and communicate and tell me things. And I would tell her and she's like, yeah, that's that's true. And he would tell me that I was like a sister vibration to Archangel Michael. It's funny mm. because I forgot about that because it's, you know, way back in college, like half my life ago. Like I said, you do feel like home to me. Yeah, that was the feeling and the saying that um, I was getting from spirit as well. Was there, was there anything else that you want to have a look into or any questions or areas of life that you want to ask about? I would like to know, uh, there is an event coming with Elon Musk taking my work to the moon and bringing living water to this planet. And I... Uh, you told me it's so important for humanity that you like me personally, I can't really wrap my head around it because the, the idea of turning all of our water into living water and bringing forth the highest levels of divine light yeah. into the water yeah. um, will change this planet in ways that we can't even fathom. So I'm wondering if you're getting anything on, you know, when I met the Anunnaki, they said, you know, you were once known as the water bearer. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean? You know, it didn't mean anything to me, but now yeah. I can look someone in the eye and go, you know what? I am the water bearer. You know, would you like to see uh, NASA's results? Um, so I guess the only other question I would have is my role being the water bearer here and now yeah. I understand it because it's, it's true. What, yeah. What's happening, I guess, is the question with bringing living water to this planet. It's almost like baptizing the entire world. And it's going to be happening this year, by the way, when SpaceX takes my work to the moon. Wow. So that's so incredible. And I, I can't, like you're blowing my mind with the level of synchronicities. Because I didn't, I didn't realize that to do with the water, because the water has been speaking to me for a couple of years, but it's been more end of last year and this year, there's been an urgency with her communicating and trying to bring a message. Um, and it's more, I guess, been like to do with the spirit of the water, but she was saying that to do with like the way that she's been treated on earth and to do with the level of consciousness that her spirit chose to leave earth in a lot of the places. And she's been talking and preparing and communicating to different people to prepare the earth to receive like her spirit back. So like, you're mm -hmm. blowing my mind with what you're saying. Um, and yesterday, when I was shuffling the cards, when you were talking about it, probably about three, four times, I saw that same shamanic energy. So you're definitely doing the role that you're supposed to be doing and remembering that energy glides over the water. So we'll have a look and see what spirit wants us to know around that mission coming up. And if there's anything that um, they want to show us. I just feel the spirit of the water as soon as I start to touch the cards and, and feel into this. Okay, they're giving me five cards, so we'll feel into these. I love that video uh, where you pulled nine cards. Oh. <laughs> that, that made me smile. Yeah, I, I like doing, I like having fun. I think that's like the Aussie sense of humor as well. You know, like we're playful and life's for fun too. That's my saying is if you're not having fun, stop it. <laughs> that is a really good saying I like that it's something to live by isn't it yes so I'm Just seeing a few different things. Things. it was always intended to be enjoyed and yeah I, I was told it was meant to be a playground we've turned it into a war ground but it was yeah. never intended to be a war ground it was meant to be a playground 
That's what I feel. And I feel that's where we're heading back towards. And I think it's to do with a lot of the oppression and suppression and sort of, I guess, the, you know, the slave energy that we've been put into here on the earth realm. Um, what, I'm, what I'm feeling like with the energy, I keep seeing the sun embed into the water or activate as well. So I do feel that there's something to do with the sun's energy, helping to kind of like rebirth that life back into the water too. Um, it's like a cosmic vibration that comes in to like cellularly activate it on a, if it was like within us, it's something to do with the mitochondrial DNA. And with the mitochondrial DNA, that's something that comes as a gift from like the mother lineage, but it's usually a lot to do with the genes that we activate within us. So yeah, I'm, I know that's a lot of words to get out. That's just oh, like what I'm seeing. So I'm glad we're recording, but I'll just see what else they're showing me in regards to this. Yeah, so I'm seeing the spirit of water, like preparing and also being really happy to kind of like come back. But I feel that she's coming back to a place that's different. So whether there's going to be like another switch or change or something or an upgrade of frequency, I feel come before she's ready. Because if I'm looking at it sort of like where we're at now, even though we're, you know, shifting and changing, it still feels like a little bit of a, um, a shift happens before then too. The other thing that I also hear is a lot of light language coming in like with this as well. So I, I feel that it surpasses the capabilities of the English language to really express like what it means. Um, so there might be symbols that you encode into it um, and different um, energies that you kind of embed into that water. Does that make sense as well? Yes. Yeah, but you're activating it. it, it it's living water. Like you guys are, are saying the correct saying with it. Um, molecularly, the structure of it, there's no other word but perfect and divine like divine and perfect. I, I would say divine is the upper one and perfect. Um, so whatever like you have planned in terms of symbol or encoding, divine, perfect are the words that spirit gives me with this. So we'll flip the cards over. And it, it's funny because it is the energy of water. So we see this card, the three of discs, you can see like the water coming in. What's interesting is this symbol for me of a triangle with the circles for 20 something years, spirit has told me this is the gateway. And they also reference like an intergalactic gateway for accessing whether it's information or, you know, coming in and out of this matrix or this, um, this reality. But this is um, Capricorn. That, that looks like my 432 disc behind the pyramid. Wow. That, that hurts my head. <laughs> well, it's interesting, like that you said, it hurts your head too, because I always see the gateway energy within us too. Like it literally is within us. Um, the crystals within the third eye, the crystals within the ears form a tetrahedron. And when you look at like the water source that's right here, it comes from part of the brain called the choroidal plexus, which is where like you have the blood and all of a sudden like the blood and water divide and the choroidal plexus has the plasma energy or the charge from the blood, but the blood is separated. So it's literally where the plasma waters come into the body. So, mm. you know, this runs down our spinal column. It's around the pericardium of the heart, womb space for women, but this is the gateway. So not only are you going to be like activating the water, this will activate the portals as well that have been laying dormant on the earth. And this is where we mm. will come back that utopia energy we we're going to see reforestation and things like just all of a sudden take off out of nowhere places that have been like desolate we're going to see nature start to like come back over and all of That's the divas thing. is I that what you're thinking you too? Wait, yeah wait till the world sees what happens when you use 432 water you just use one of my discs put a glass of water on it and NASA's proved it can revitalize and resurrect dead municipal tap water back into spring water energetics. But when you use that water to do agriculture, uh, the, the actual nutritional value per bite more than double. So every bite of a potato oh. is gonna have over double the nutrients, but they, the crop will also grow much faster and be impervious to drought. Uh, but, you know, Dr. Emoto showed water as memory. And yeah. so every bit of water that is restructured, if you take one drop of that, 
and put it into another container of water that's never been introduced to the 432 frequency, it will become restructured as well. So okay. what I can tell you is, this is mind blowing to me because this just happened. I'm so excited to share this with you. Is um, you know, I started working with the Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull yeah. and and Richard Hoagland from NASA. So oh, he cool. contacted, yeah, I couldn't believe it because he was a hero of mine, you know, yeah. and I needed answers. I was led to Richard's work and he contacted me, said, Michael, we know your story sounds batshit crazy to other people, but NASA has been looking into how energy flows multi dimensionally. For a very long time he said the numbers you're bringing to the table are right on the money so he's yeah. the one that organized nasa to look into my work and so recently i didn't know this but he was the technical science advisor for the sci-fi channel on a documentary on the mitchell hedges crystal skull so yeah. when he found out that me and the skull has been reconnected because i was part of the team that brought it here four hundred thousand years ago and yeah. he said can guardian and you to talk about this and talk about and I said yeah sure so what I didn't know is he went back to the biophysicist that consults for NASA and she's a world-renowned you know a biophysicist her name is Beverly Rubick and um, she said I can't she he asked her to come on the show with us I didn't know this but she couldn't yeah. she's working on a 5g project but um, she said what I can tell you is I remember looking into Michael's work and what I found was once I put a, a beaker of water on one of his 432 discs that the energy it was revitalized but yeah. it grew exponentially yeah. so that right there I'm like well wait a minute that adds a whole nother oh, level no. You know, like, how is there a threshold? You know, yeah. how, you know, and she did tell me, I think that you should put a glass of water and you can do this as well with your disc, put a glass of water on it at night and let it sit overnight. And then every morning, drink it. And you'll notice all kinds of oxygen bubbles form along the side because of yeah. whatever it's doing to the water, it's bringing more oxygen into the water. But here's where it got weird is she said, apparently, Michael has created a cosmic energy collector or a qi collector i'm like well, what the hell is a cosmic energy yeah. collector i've never heard that term here's yeah. nikolai tesla 369 energy unlimited free energy yeah. and he said this is the energy that will free the planet from oh. all fossil fuels and we'll be able to tap it and you know so yeah. uh, and I'm thinking, well what the hell is a qi collector by the way richard hoagland said Collector is not the proper term because it's both a transceiver and receiver simultaneously. Yeah. So it's a transceiver. That's um, what this is up here as well. This part yeah. of our brain, like to do with psychic senses, is the antenna. And, and around the, um, the pineal gland, we actually have a fleshy little tuning fork that sits right around it. I'll have to send you like a little photo of a, a sketch, but you're blowing yeah, my mind. Sure. Hang on. I want to show you something. Uh, yes. Is this the disc you have? I've got, I'll, I'll just grab them. I've got them sitting on a big slab of rose quartz crystal with a rose. I've got both of them actually. Right on. So I've got this one. It's a little ah, bit hard. That's this one. That's and the actual one that got sent to NASA. Is it this one? Yes. Wow. Uh, actually, show me the other one. I think you have one that I don't make anymore because it's too close to the other one. But I called it the rainbow disc. Oh. It was so. Uh, I think you got a very rare one there. Yeah, I love them. This is the one that you showed me. Oh yeah. And this is the one that went to NASA, and wow. uh, you know they tested. But I can tell you, part of this technology was Chief Gold and White Eagle. And to put it just in a nutshell, he told me how to do an ancient water blessing ceremony in the spring aquifers in Florida, where yeah. water's coming up, the fountain of youth, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, he said, once you do this ceremony, it will quant quantumly entangle this image to divine holy water or living water and bring forth this cosmic energy to anything. He said, he was taken to the very first spring ever 
It's in Miami, by the way. It's not St. Augustine, where everyone thinks the first fountain of youth is. But uh, he said, Michael, you are a shaman or a medicine man, and that we weren't allowed to take any water out of the fountain of youth, but we were allowed to bathe our healing instruments for Native Americans. That's feathers, eagle wings, yeah. uh, rattles, shakers. And then those tools would bring forth the attribute of this cosmic energy coming through or Tesla, you know, chi, oh. prana, life force, yeah. back to a tribe. He said, I had a very small reach of people that I could reach with it because if someone in my tribe needed healing, I could fan them down with the eagle wing or whatever. He said, yeah. but the only thing that makes something a shamanic healing instrument is it needs to be created by your own two hands. He said, these are your shamanic medicine man healing yeah. instruments. This was played into yeah. existence by your own two hands. He said, with this, you can reach the world where we couldn't. Yeah. As he said, anything that contains this image, it doesn't matter whether it's a coaster or a t-shirt yeah. or a poster. Well, once I did the water blessing ceremony, which was in 2018, by the way, it's not bound to this space time. It's multidimensional, meaning that anyone, like you got your disc way before 2018, it was <laughs> already transmitting this frequency because of my work in 2018. Wow. And, um, so, I, and this is what's being taken to the moon by Elon Musk in the Humanity Hall of Fame crystal time capsule. So mm -hmm. I, I, it's strange to me because if NASA can see this increase of photonic yeah. light energy coming through it, because I asked the biophysicist, I said, well, wait a minute, because I have all the data, I have all the photography, um, yeah. and it shows municipal tap water from California. It's almost dead. It's just like a little yeah. tiny pinprick of light. But once you put it on one of these discs, you know, just use it as a coaster. 15 yeah. minutes, it looks like an explosion of a supernova within wow. that water droplet. So I said, I asked I would love to look at the science on it as well, because I've got like quite a science mind. I'll just show you. This is funny. When I did a show on um, Beyond Mystic on water, I, for some mm -hmm. reason, I couldn't wipe it off my whiteboard. So I've just kept like all of my notes. Um, and even like when you put into Dramatria things like, um, you know, like I, I just listen to what spirit tells me to pop in or what they tell me to like, you know, we're going to look in this avenue. But a lot of it's to do with water being a gateway within our body. Yeah. Like, you know, around the heart, there's a gateway there when we can look within the sacred waters. Um, but yeah, I'll have to have a look through my notes and send you some notes or maybe the link to the show. I don't, I don't know anyone else who's obsessed, but, you know, there's maybe a couple of people that are obsessed with the messages and things in the water. It's amazing. I, I'm starting to understand that water holds the Akashic records. Yeah, it's, it's listening to all human yes. thought form and yeah. it's multidimensional. And, you know, that's why, too, we got to learn to be more respectful and not destroy the water we're drinking. In a closed loop system, a municipal tap water system, it's taking on all the negative thought forms from anyone that it comes in contact with. And then That's we true. drink it and it goes back through the system and then we drink it again. And uh, so I think this could take a squeegee. I'm talking about this technology that revitalizes yeah. that water because if if the shine is returned to water, that means the negative thought forms have been removed. Because Dr. Right. Omoto showed once negative thought forms are uh, encoded into water, it loses right. its geometry. It loses yeah. its snowflake complexity, and it just looks like a puddle. Well, if all of a sudden all you got to do is take that same water that's inundated in negative thought forms and put it on a disk, and it clears all that away. What a blessing that and, is. And even just, you know, like using the disc on your body and things too. And I've got, oh, yeah. um, I met someone uh, connected with the Emoto Foundation, gave me the little Emoto crystals. So we've got them on the water filter and the kids got gifted a kid's version of the book and things. But yesterday, how's the synchronicity with this? One of my clients sent me um, a link to a lady called Veda. I forget her last name, but she's doing a lot of, she'll put, um, you know, a petri dish of water on top of a photo. Have you seen her work? And no. the picture, 
freezes into the ice crystal. So whatever water sits on, it is almost like photographic paper, you know, like where you go into the dark room, you can yes. put a flower on top and you see the flower. Yeah, yeah it's really interesting. I'm not familiar she's with her. Around. I've seen the same thing though with a, a college that we're finding, like if you take a rose and put that rose in the water and then uh, photograph the every uh, molecule of the water, it takes on the rose yeah. form. Like with it. Yeah. yeah, it's like she's cosmic asking... Play-Doh. <laughs> it is, and she's, she's actually getting what she calls hydroglyphs. So she'll ask the water um, to show her the symbol for something. I think she said she was getting, she's got a few so far, but she asked the water and it will reproduce. Um, she'll ask 50 times. So you know how like a motor would do a hundred dishes to get the, um, the love and gratitude symbol. So mm -hmm. she'll get like the same sort of symbol come up for different things. Um, but yeah, it's almost like a hieroglyph. So she's learning the language that the water is speaking in mm. picture, like picture mm. type form. I'll have to send you the link. I hadn't heard about her and it's, it's fascinating, but I'll have a look into, oh, so with, with this card as well, I always talk about that this is a fire that cannot be extinguished by water, but we see here as well, I really feel that this is talking about, you know, your mission and the water and everything, but I also feel it's talking about like the water within our, our sacred waters and how this is also connected to do with getting up and out of this matrix in a way. Um, the That's next why, card, yeah. I wear it. You know, we yeah. are water. We're 70 to 90% water. By the way, do you have one of these? No, I don't. Oh, there yeah. you go. <laughs> I'm adding to <laughs> your uh, 432 swag bag. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Exactly what you're saying. I can tell you the grandmothers are more excited about this. They said this will restructure and we revitalize water as well, but it's double sided. One way oh. is normal human chakras from red to purple and all the yeah. other colors of the rainbow. The other was reversed. And because us Native Americans believe that once you went through your ascension process that the chakras flip and no longer is it red in the root and purple in the crown, but oh. it's purple in the root. And that's why it says you become the whirling rainbow is the two yeah. mesh. Um, but uh, she said, you know, this is going to restructure and revitalize all the water in your own body, but it's also transmitting out into its environment. So wherever okay. these go on the planet, um, it's going to be raising the frequency of its environment. I can tell you, I was actually shocked because now I'm beginning to talk about the continuation of Nikolai Tesla's work with this and tapping into cosmic energy and bringing it forth. Because I asked this biophysicist, Beverly Rubik, I said, well, listen, where is that extra energy coming from? Because yeah. if there's no energy, but now there's a lot of energy, is it coming from our sun? Is it coming from our planets, our electromagnetic fields of the planets? And she said, no, it's coming from another dimension. It's mm -hmm. opening a portal through the fabric of our space time to bring through higher dimensional energy, which brings with it it realigns things into higher dimensional organization. So yeah. things that are not in alignment get aligned. And uh, so the grandmothers are really, more than anything, they are more excited about this because wow. you can wear it. You yeah. can kill the planet with it. Yeah. And I think that's what why this card's coming up. Right but yeah, this, the three of swords, traditionally it's, you know, through a heart and three swords but in this one we see this as more connected to do with throat chakra and it's Saturn's energy with Libra so this is about kind of like that pressure that control and then we've got Libra energy here bringing it back into balance I feel that this is actually what's been imprinted on our water I feel that this is the disharmony the pollution and different things but here you are like ready to just fully like liberate and bring freedom to the spirit of the water and to the people. And look at this, you're actually co-creating with the spirit of water. We've got the two of cups, mm -hmm. which is about like, you know, love and connection, it's Cancerian um, and Venus energy as well. So I do feel that that's a big part of also what you're pouring into it is like molecularly, you know, charging it with love too. The other thing that we have is queen of discs. Now she should only have a disc, but in this particular deck, she has a wand. And we see here, there's a Merkaba inside of the cube. 
So the Merkaba representing sort of fifth dimensional and higher frequencies and energies, but the cube represents the 3D or the earth domain. So there's something that she's changing from within that's going to change the out. So whatever right. you're doing with water, it's literally going to change the planet. The other thing that we see is her holding the disc, which, you know, just makes me think of the disc. Yeah, <laughs> so right. she's got this. Yeah, like it literally, you know, if I'm going to translate the symbols. So this also represents like a fifth dimensional energy, but you also see the pine cone on top of her head and the antenna. So she's mm. so practically attuned, but it's Capricorn energy. So, you know, it, it's sort of a little bit lonely at the top sometimes, but you're the first one to, to make this breakthrough. So Capricorn energy, when everyone else is sort of going, no, it can't be done you know, a Capricorn or, or even, you know, you look in the wild and the goats are climbed up, four little hooves balanced on this little rock. So they always show people what others think can't be done. They don't even turn around to look. They just keep aiming, keep going. So Queen of Discs for me is what I call more connected with law of assumption. So it really just is coming up with like your version of what you know and what spirit's telling you. And then everything else falls into alignment. And so like your science will add up, all the data will add up. Um, people will sort of find out after the fact what your spirit's been guiding you and telling you all along. So I feel that you're right on track with this. I do yeah. really feel that there's a co-creation with the spirit of water that you're also working with. Um, the other idea, like you're just giving me like so many ideas on what I want to use the disc for as well, like opening up my world with that. Um, a lot of my work as well has looked into H3O, like the water that comes from fruit. And it talks about how the molecular structure um, is different on a microcrystalline level when you look at the water that comes through um, fruit. But I even want to put fruit onto that, you know, like watermelon, yes. things like that, <laughs> and try that out and see like what that's like. What I can tell you with this is, uh, you know, one of the first communications with the Anunnaki was a crop circle, and it was the Ia Inki crop circle because yeah. they had told me I was once known as Ia Inki, and that made no sense to me. So I said, encode the name Ia Inki into a crop circle. That'll be my sign that you yeah. are who you say you are, and I am who you say I am. Sure enough, yeah. they did, but in that same crop circle, how they did it, by the way, I know you know, but since we're recording this, oh, I they encoded I it. Yeah, it's uh, they encoded the word Ia space Inky with ASCII binary code on the outside of a seven pointed star. And uh, but around that seven pointed star was seven like they look like constellations. And each one like had the first one had like three stars in it. Then the next one had three stars in it. So it was three, three, four, 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 five. That's a seven digit number. When you Google it, it's a gene in our hum human DNA called a universal stress protein that controls how the body handles outside stressors. That's why it's called a universal stress protein, particularly how the body handles viruses. That's interesting. And wow. increased solar activity to make the body more resilient to handle higher increases of solar activity that we are going through right now. So what they're telling me is part of that extra energy coming in from a higher dimension has the ability to activate your universal stress protein within our DNA by just drinking it. But one thing I do want to tell you, just so you can connect some of the pieces of the puzzle, is just recently I met a dear friend of mine who early on, he's the first one that he worked with water. He worked with, they called it maple water and in ma making maple syrup, they tap the bottom of the maple tree and water comes out of it. And for the longest time, the farmers used it as just scrap water to wash their hands yeah. or whatever. But they're finding out it's one of the most pure waters on the planet because once you yeah. filter water through a maple tree, so I've drank it many times, but uh, he has equipment that can look at it's called the Meisner field, but you can look at it as the electromagnetic field around every organ in the body, whether it's yeah. the spleen, the gallbladder, the heart, everything. And it has all these diodes. You put your hand on it and he goes, Michael, I got my equipment set up over there. Let's, let's see what your disc does. And I said, well, how can I get a control? Because if I walk over there with it, that'll not 
do the control properly. Yeah. He said, I'll take it with me. He said, take your necklace off because you need to get, give it a couple hours for it yeah. to leave your field. So I go over there and we do, we get a, a, a and I got all the data for this, by the way, um, awesome. with a photograph of every, you know, the body and all the electrical fields around everything. And um, seven of mine were slightly off. And then with my hand on top of the machine, and he had me do this. This hand, I put the disc. This hand was on the diodes, which is oh, yeah. 50 diodes looking at all the energy fields. I just went like this and it healed and realigned every single thing that was slightly out of alignment, except my cerebrum. Is that the name of it? And the brain? Oh, yeah, cerebellum. Um, cerebellum, yes. Yeah. And that makes sense to me because I was attacked by the men in black and um, they shattered my face and I had to have my face wired back together, but it pushed um, my jaw back into those nerve uh, bundles that are back there. That it has actually manifested in brain damage that it's short-term memory loss, which that yeah. really upset me when I found out. I'm like, how dare them like pick my memory? But now spirit's like, well, you didn't what really need them. One of my friends feels that. One, yeah. one of my friends is a neuroscientist. I can give you her details. She actually um, helps with like, a, if you can increase the, the level of dopamine within the brain and things, you also can increase how we can kind of pull files and things from the cerebellum. But when you look at oh, her wow. brain scan, after there's increased cortical thickness of the brain that's permanent within just a couple of minutes. I'll, I'll oh send you her details. Yeah. Please, please, please do, because that's the only thing that it didn't heal. And uh, there's like eight things that were a little off and the other seven, it put right back into equilibrium. And I got all the science data to back that up. Because like wow. you said, I think we're just learning what this can do I and so. for human health and working you know, if this is chi and prana, life force, holy spirit, whatever you want to call it, um, yeah. it's almost like being given your own oriental chi master <laughs> to heal our own bodies, or yeah. uh, or or it's just good weed. I'm just joking. It's That's amazing. the name of my book. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> I'm, I'm just, it's feeling just good weed. <laughs> just good weed. Did you say? <laughs> I'm feeling like we should maybe have a look into if there's anything that wants to come through connecting like with the cards to the disc as well if there's any message that wants to come through do you want to have a look into that, that? that sounds brilliant yeah that's just like where I'm getting guided to go so I just saw the shaman card come up again so you're definitely working like as a huge archetypal energy as this beautiful shaman to bring the messages down here into the earth realm I'm just hearing the word pictogram. Um, I don't know if that's an actual word, but I feel that it's like a picture, um, which I guess would represent, you know, the picture that you have and laid in the beautiful disc. Let's see what else comes up. Do you know the what that image is specifically? Was it's it just water? I'm trying to remember. It's, sorry, it's what was that? It's yeah, water. Or maybe you play it's, uh, string. Just frequency. I recorded my guitar in my studio, just nothing fancy, just going. Bow, bow, yeah, I remember. Bow. I sent incredible. that to the scientists, and then they put it through a big vat of water, and they can record what's going on on the surface. So, what really blew their mind, let me see if I can get this. See, right there, yeah. toroidal physics. Um, yeah, it is. It's, it has the Fibonacci spiral, the golden mean, the golden ratio around it. It's really the yeah. first time a uh, the vector equilibrium for rotor physics, and this isn't computer generated. That's Mother Nature, but around yeah. it is all of the five platonic solids of sacred geometry, and it's all yeah. encoded in this image. So they were freaked out. They said uh, they asked me for my permission to release the full twenty seconds of the image being created in real time. Because this is just a still frame, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and there's so um, much, there's so much in it. It's like you feel like you fall into that, like on a, you know, an extra dimensional level. It's just, it blows my mind every time I, you know, sit with them in meditation and things. Oh, the 
the word, I just remembered what Spirit was saying when I ran my hands over the cards. The word that came through, so they said pictogram, then they had the word holy, but it came through like loud and clear. I saw it in writing as well as heard mm. them say it. And then I felt the feeling. So they're really trying to give a full body feeling of like what these discs are. So it's something, yeah, connected it with that. I'll just see what else they're showing me. Oh my gosh, the energy just got really intense. So I, can I feel it. Yeah, I don't know what's going to be under the underside of the cards that I've got. I've still got them flipped down, but I heard and I felt myself go into somewhere else. And then it was just this energy come up that it almost feels like it's going to blow a circuit. So whether mm. this is like what we were talking about right at the start too, to do with like holding the particular, um, you know, energy and frequency to do with um, how we were talking about spontaneous human combustion. Mm -hmm. So whether it's sort of taking us to like the limit of activation, but I heard the words, holy name of God. So I'm going to flip over the cards that we have. Oh, this, what I just said about bringing us into fullness, it was the emperor card that was like just blowing my energy, blowing my mind. And look at this, the virtue card. I always describe this as being like, if we talk about it in sacred geometry, like with the three, so you would have like law of opposites, which is duality. It's the craziness we're seeing on the planet right now. When you add that element of bringing God back in, it brings us into like the holy, um, uh, I'm going to say triangle, triad. Um, but with this as well, you know how you said like on the sword, you've got the fleur de lis and things as well. There's something to do with like that aspect or that kind of symbol. But the way that the cards came out, you're working with the water again. So hmm. the discs also are, are saying we are to work with the water, like we are to work with um, consciousness. But yeah, it's definitely like a they're working with you, you're working with them. We see the seven of discs as well. And the seven of discs, even though it's called the card of failure, I don't go by the words. For me, spirit always shows this is something that's dormant. And it's like a nest with eggs in it. So we can choose to sit on the nest and hatch those eggs and bring about those, um, I guess, full expressions of DNA into perfection. But mm. you're also doing it with the energy of God, with the energy of water, the energy of source. Um, yeah. Does that all make sense? Too? Our, yeah, because we're just talking about the DNA activation for yeah. the universal stress protein. Yeah, yeah, it all just, um, and I mean, this is Aries and Jupiter energy. So Aries is, you know, the first one out of the gates that we're looking at horse racing, um, you know, <laughs> married with astrology. So it's, it's the first zodiac sign, it's the fire, the birth. So you're literally birthing something new. And Jupiter energy is growth, expansion, wealth, abundance. It's everything opposite of scarcity. Mm. So, yeah, I love I'm it really because our. Uh... I feel of completion because it being taken to the moon by Elon Musk and yeah. learning from NASA that the energy grows exponentially for anything that is under its transmission. Uh, yeah. Well, it's going to be on the moon for the next 10 billion years, at least. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's hard it's for me to wrap my head around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was yeah, just going to That's all I can say is a hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, it's just hard to humanly wrap your mind around something so huge. And it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Was there anything All else? All I could do is sit back and oh. enjoy the ride, right? And just, yeah, that's I'm starting thing. to feel like we're all part of this weird Scooby-Doo National <laughs> Treasure movie. And it's just, oh, we'll go see what's going to happen next, you know? Yeah. This has been so fun. And uh, I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And you are amazing. And your mind is amazing. And your intelligence and your wisdom and your knowledge is uh, truly a breath of fresh air. So uh, thank you. I, I just feel that reflected back by, you know, everything that you encompass and, you know, in such a beautiful spirit as well. You know, it's, it's really rare to see someone that has that intelligence aligned, but they have the heart to be able to bring it through and express it in the way that you do and yeah you, you just you're a gift to the world and I'm just excited oh, wow. to, you know to know you and that um 
yeah, and adventures in the future as well. I'm really looking forward yeah. to coming over and um, you showing me around and yeah. I can't I just, wait. Just feel this beautiful. You know what? I actually just looked this up. You know, you know, because uh, I, I got a lot of things coming up in the future, and I in Lake Erie is right there, so you know about the base, you know, and all the UFOs yeah. and whatnot. So uh, we're gonna have a place to have a powwow <laughs> oh that's going to be amazing and I feel like it'll be catching up like old times because it's just there's such a beautiful comfortable familiarness like I, I I don't feel like we're you know just talking for like you know the second time it feels like that I've just known you forever so yeah I, uh, I feel the exact beautiful. same way a matter of fact you know the first time we even met you know we did that little video and uh yeah. I, just, I, I was just blown away by you and I'm still it's just the flower still unfolding so oh I thank you really that's sad. really sweet that's so sweet well I hope you have a beautiful night I know it's getting later over there for you um but yeah I'll I'm send you so I'm good <laughs> oh good well I'll take a photo of this and send it through but yeah please do oops <laughs> and the and energy I'd love to get a, a, you know, this video, I would love to have a, and do I have your permission to share this? Yeah, of course. I'll send people your way and uh, for their own you. readings. And uh, I really do appreciate it. And um, I know what disc I'm gonna be making you. It's already, uh, I know, uh, um, um, so but uh, I can't wait to get a little care package together for you. And I'll be sending you one of these pendants as well. And, uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, check this out real quick. I don't know if you've seen these, but I don't know wrong way. Oh, I haven't seen it in, in person. We're as close as we are in person. That's an actual crop circle. And, that is uh, incredible. So I got a whole collection of these now. And uh, yeah. That is amazing. Uh, I'm just, I'm so excited to see what the future holds and to see, you know, it. there's a, one of my friends said that there was a beautiful native saying, when, when I was just in Arizona recently and he said that it's like the energy is already set up and we're just walking into it and that's really what it feels like with everything that's got unfolding and this beautiful entanglement and this yeah this cosmic story that's unfolding so it's just yeah everything's falling into place and I guess we just have to show up and be prompted and listen yeah 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 be present yeah yeah well you take care I'm sending you lots of love and being mm -hmm. hugs and you look after yourself i sure will and you do the same and uh it's been a pleasure and enjoy the rest of oh uh, your whole day over there right i'm pretty much it's um oh it's almost lunchtime i didn't realize we'd been chatting for a while it just went went like that mm. you know what saying they gave me is time's fun when you're having flies <laughs> <laughs> i remember that one <laughs> All right, you All right. enjoy the rest of your day and uh, you. have a nice Thanks. lunch and uh, we will talk here soon. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.